The atmosphere in the small hospital room was heavy with sorrow as the family gathered around the bed where the patriarch, Richard, took his last breaths. The rhythmic hum of the life support machines seemed to echo the finality of the moment. Catherine, Richard's wife, clutched his lifeless hand, tears streaming down her face, while their two sons, Don and Billy, stood on opposite sides of the bed. Catherine's voice quivered as she spoke. He's gone. Our beloved Richard is gone. Her words hung in the air, met with stifled sobs from the family. Dan, the elder son, wore a stoic expression, his eyes fixed on the floor. Well, we knew this was coming. It's not like it's a surprise, he said, his tone lacking any semblance of emotion. Billy, the younger son, shot him a sharp look. Dan, this is Dad we're talking about. Show some respect, he whispered, placing a comforting hand on his mother's shoulder. As the hospital staff prepared to take Richard's body away, Catherine couldn't help but feel a growing unease. The weight of grief settled upon the room, and it was clear that the passing of their father would open a Pandora's box of family dynamics, hidden resentments, and unspoken tensions. Later at the family home, Don brooded in the living room, while Billy and Catherine sat in the kitchen, surrounded by the lingering scent of Richard's favorite dishes. The air was thick with unspoken words, and the specter of the impending inheritance loomed over their grieving hearts. I never thought it would come to this, Catherine said, her voice trembling. Your father worked so hard, and now... Her words trailed off as she fought back tears. Billy reached across the table, squeezing his mother's hand. We'll get through this together, Mom. We're family. Dan, overhearing the conversation from the living room, interjected with a sharp tone. We'll see about that. I've got my own family to think about, you know. Billy shot him an incredulous look. This isn't the time for that, Dan. Dad just passed away. Ignoring Billy's plea, Dan coldly replied, Well, I hope you're ready for what comes next. We need to talk about the inheritance. The room fell silent, the weight of grief momentarily overshadowed by the impending storm of family discord. Little did they know, this was just the beginning of a tumultuous journey that would test the bonds of blood and unveil the true nature of their familial ties. The family attorney, Mr. Thompson, a man with graying hair and a somber demeanor, gathered the grieving family in his office to disclose the contents of Richard's will. The air in the room was tense, and the weight of anticipation hung heavily as the attorney cleared his throat. Thank you all for being here during this difficult time. Mr. Thompson began, offering a sympathetic glance to Catherine, who sat with tear-stained eyes. Richard was a prudent man, and he made his wishes clear in his will. Catherine clutched a tissue in her hands, her knuckles turning white. Billy, seated beside her, shot a supportive look her way. The attorney continued, the total inheritance amounts to $30,000. As outlined in the will, this sum will be divided among the surviving family members. Dunn raised an eyebrow his expression betraying a hint of disappointment. That's it? Thirty grand? Dad had more than that in his savings account, he remarked, his voice laced with dissatisfaction. Billy, ever the voice of reason, chimed in. It's not about the money, Dan. It's about honoring Dad's wishes and making sure everyone gets their fair share. Ignoring his brother's comment, Dan leaned forward, his frustration palpable. I expected more. What about the house? Dad owned that house for years. There must be something more. Mr. Thompson adjusted his glasses, maintaining a professional demeanor. Regarding the house, Richard had specific instructions. I will read the relevant section now. The room fell silent as everyone leaned in, awaiting the crucial details. Catherine's hands trembled as Mr. Thompson continued, To my beloved wife, Catherine, I bequeath our family home. However, should Catherine choose not to accept this inheritance, 
The house will go to my sons, Don and Billy, to be shared equally. The revelation hung in the air, and Catherine's eyes widened in surprise. Billy gave her a reassuring squeeze on the shoulder. Dan, however, scowled. Mom, you can't be serious. This is our family home. Dad would want us to keep it in the family. Catherine took a deep breath, her gaze shifting between her two sons. I need some time to think about this, she said, her voice wavering. The attorney nodded understandingly. Take all the time you need, Catherine. This is a significant decision. As the family left the attorney's office, the weight of the will's revelations settled upon them. The modest inheritance and the house's uncertain fate cast a shadow over their grief, setting the stage for familial discord that would unravel in the chapters to come. After the emotionally charged meeting with the attorney, the family returned home, each member grappling with their own thoughts about the inheritance. The air in the house was thick with tension, and Catherine's mind was a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. In the living room, Dan sat with a brooding expression, frustration evident on his face. Mom, we can't just let this happen. The house has been in our family for generations. It's not fair to hand it over just like that. Catherine, weary from the day's revelations, responded, Dan, I need time to process everything. Losing your father and now these decisions, it's overwhelming. Billy, overhearing the conversation, entered the room with a more measured approach. Mom, I know this is a lot to take in, but the house is a big responsibility. We need to consider what's best for everyone, including you. Don scoffed. Responsibility? Billy, it's our family home. We can't just abandon it. And what about Mom's financial situation? We should be taking care of her, not burdening her with these decisions. Billy sighed, realizing the gravity of the situation. Dan, we need to think practically. Renovating the house was Dad's dream, and it's in Mom's name now. We can't just force her to keep it if it's not what she wants. As the brothers exchanged heated words, Catherine entered the room, her expression weary but determined. I've made a decision, she declared, capturing the attention of her sons. What is it, Mom? Billy asked, concern etched on his face. Catherine took a deep breath. Your father wanted these renovations. I want to honor his wishes. We'll renovate the house and make it more accessible for our old age. Tan scowled. Accessible? Mom, we could use that money for something more important. We're not made of money. Billy, ever the voice of reason, intervened. Dan, we'll find a way to make this work. We can discuss the details later. Right now, Mom needs our support. Despite the disagreements, the decision was made to proceed with the renovations. The looming question of the house's fate hung over the family, casting a shadow on the familial bonds that had once seemed unbreakable. Little did they know that this choice would only deepen the rifts within the family, setting the stage for more conflicts to unfold in the chapters ahead. The family gathered for a meal in an attempt to maintain some semblance of normalcy amidst the turmoil surrounding Richard's passing and the impending renovations. The dining room, once a place of shared laughter and warm conversations, now felt strained with an undercurrent of tension. Catherine, clad in an apron, moved about the kitchen, preparing the meal. Billy and his wife, Anne, arrived first offering a small bouquet of flowers. Mom, you've been through so much. We thought these might brighten your day, Anne said, giving Catherine a sympathetic smile. Thank you, Anne. Your support means the world to me, Catherine replied, a faint smile breaking through the weariness in her eyes. As they chatted, Dan and Rebecca entered the room, their arrival accompanied by an air of indifference. The atmosphere shifted as they took their seats, their lack of engagement palpable. Billy attempted to break the ice. How have you two been holding up? Don shrugged. Same old, same old. 
Life goes on, you know. Rebecca added, We've got our own things to deal with. Can't be constantly mired in family drama. Anne exchanged a concerned glance with Billy, sensing the growing rift. Well, we're all here for each other. It's important to stick together during tough times, she said, trying to foster a sense of unity. The conversation took an unexpected turn when Catherine, attempting to share her struggles, revealed her recent cancer diagnosis. A heavy silence fell over the table as the gravity of her words sank in. Billy, ever the empathetic son, spoke up, Mom, we're here for you. Whatever you need, we'll support you every step of the way. However, Dan and Rebecca's response was far from supportive. Rebecca rolled her eyes. Seriously. What else could go wrong? First, that, now this. Dan, displaying a callous demeanor, added, Mom, we've all got our own problems. You can't expect us to drop everything for you. Catherine, hurt by their lack of empathy, took a deep breath. I understand. Let's not dwell on it. We're here to discuss something important anyway. As Catherine tried to transition to a different topic, the discontent in the room lingered. The once close family seemed to be drifting further apart, and the strained relationships became more apparent with every passing moment. Little did they know that this family gathering would be a turning point, marking the beginning of a deeper emotional rift that would test the strength of their familial bonds in the chapters to come. The family sat uneasily in the living room, the air thick with anticipation. Catherine, aware of the weight her decision carried, took a moment before addressing her sons and their wives. I've thought long and hard about the house, about your father's dream of renovating it. It's a big responsibility, and I appreciate everyone's input. Catherine began, her gaze shifting between Dan and Billy. Dan, ever the assertive one, interrupted, Mom, we can't just let the house go. It's a part of our family history. Dad wanted us to keep it in the family. Billy, sitting beside his mother, interjected, Dan, we have to consider what's practical. Mom needs a comfortable and accessible home for her old age. The tension in the room escalated as Dan and Billy locked eyes, their differing opinions creating a palpable divide. Catherine, feeling the weight of her decision, continued, After much contemplation, I've decided to leave the house to Billy. It's in his name now. Dan's face contorted in disbelief. What? Mom, you can't be serious. This is our family home. Dad would have wanted us to keep it. Catherine sighed. Dan, your father also wanted what was best for all of us. Billy and Anne have supported me through thick and thin. It's only fair. Rebecca, Dan's wife, chimed in with a scoff. Fair? This is ridiculous. We're not just going to let you give the house away like that. Billy, attempting to diffuse the tension, said calmly, We can discuss this further. It's not about winning or losing. It's about finding a solution that works for everyone. Dan, refusing to back down, retorted, There's nothing to discuss. This is our family home, and Mom is just handing it over. Billy shot a stern look at Dan. We'll take care of the house, Dan. Dad's dream will live on through the renovations. Let's not make this harder than it needs to be. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence as the weight of Catherine's decision settled upon the family. The once unified family home had become a source of contention, highlighting the deep-rooted differences that now threatened to fracture the bonds they had once shared. Little did they know that this decision would set the stage for more conflicts, further testing the resilience of their familial ties in the turbulent chapters to come. The fallout from the decision regarding the house reverberated through the family, and Dan and Rebecca found themselves facing financial challenges that strained their already tumultuous relationship. As bills piled up and debts accumulated, the couple struggled to maintain their lifestyle. In the cramped confines of their apartment, 
Dan scrutinized the overdue bills, his frustration palpable. This is ridiculous, Rebecca. How did we end up in such a mess? We can't afford anything anymore. Rebecca, flipping through the stack of bills, retorted, maybe if your mother hadn't handed the house over to Billy, we wouldn't be in this situation. We could have sold it and paid off some of our debts. Dan, growing increasingly agitated, shot back, it's not my fault. Mom made that decision. We should have gotten a fair share, not just be left with nothing. Their financial struggles became a constant source of tension, leading to heated arguments that echoed through the thin apartment walls. One evening, as the weight of their debts became too much to bear, Dan slammed his hand on the table, shouting, We need to do something about this. We can't live like this. Rebecca, her frustration reaching a boiling point, retorted, Maybe if you had a better job, or if your family actually cared about us, we wouldn't be in this mess. We're drowning, Dan. As their financial situation continued to deteriorate, Dan and Rebecca found themselves sinking deeper into debt. Rebecca, desperate for a way out, broached the subject of seeking financial assistance from Catherine. Dan, maybe we should talk to your mom. She's living comfortably in that renovated house while we're struggling to make ends meet. Dan, prideful and resistant, clenched his fists. I won't ask my mother for help. We can figure this out on our own. We just need a plan. Unbeknownst to Dan and Rebecca, the financial strain they faced was becoming a harsh reality check, revealing the consequences of their choices and the impact of the fractured family dynamics. The decisions made in the wake of Richard's passing continued to shape the destinies of each family member, and the repercussions of their actions were far-reaching, leaving no one untouched. Catherine's health took a turn for the worse, and the burden of her illness weighed heavily on the family. Despite the strained relationships, Billy and Anne continued to stand by her side, offering support during her challenging journey. One day, as Catherine struggled with the effects of chemotherapy, Billy and Anne sat with her in the hospital room. Tubes and machines surrounded them, creating an atmosphere of both despair and resilience. Anne, holding Catherine's frail hand, offered words of comfort. Mom, you're strong. We're here for you, every step of the way. Billy nodded in agreement. That's right, Mom. You've always been there for us. Now it's our turn to take care of you. Catherine, weakened but grateful for their presence, managed a faint smile. I appreciate both of you. It means more than you know. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Dan and Rebecca remained distant, unable to bridge the emotional gap that had widened over the recent events. Dan, conflicted and wrestling with guilt, received a call from Billy. Billy, what do you want? Dan's tone was defensive, a reflection of the lingering resentment between the brothers. I just wanted to let you know about Mom. Her condition has worsened, and we could use your support, Billy said, his voice tinged with concern. Dan, torn between family loyalty and his own grievances, hesitated before responding, I'll think about it. We've got our own things to deal with. Back at the hospital, Billy and Anne continued to provide comfort to Catherine, their actions a stark contrast to the distance maintained by Dan and Rebecca. The family dynamics were shifting, revealing the true extent of each member's commitment during times of crisis. As Catherine's health continued to decline, the question of familial support became increasingly crucial. The chapters ahead would test the family's resilience, forcing them to confront their differences and make choices that would shape the outcome of the intricate web of relationships within the family. Catherine's health reached a critical point, prompting a long overdue family meeting at the hospital. The sterile smell of antiseptic hung in the air as the family gathered, the tension palpable. Billy, with a heavy heart, addressed Don and Rebecca, Mom needs us now more than ever. We have to put our differences aside 
and be there for her. Dan, still harboring resentment, replied curtly, we wouldn't be in this situation if Mom hadn't made that decision about the house. We have our own lives to deal with. Anne, attempting to diffuse the tension, interjected, This isn't about blame. It's about supporting Mom. She needs us, and we should be here for her. Rebecca, crossing her arms defensively, scoffed, She's got you too. She doesn't need us to complicate things further. We have our own problems to deal with. Billy, frustration evident in his voice, responded, Mom is dying, and all you can think about is your problems. This is our family, and we should be united during difficult times. As the family dynamics unraveled, Catherine, lying frail in her hospital bed, spoke weakly, Enough. I don't want to see my children fighting. We should be a source of strength for one another. Dan, his expression softened by his mother's frailty, hesitated before saying, Mom, we're not heartless. We just need to figure out what's best for everyone. Catherine, tired but resolute, replied, What's best is for my family to be together. I don't want regrets when I'm gone. The confrontation exposed the deep-seated conflicts within the family, highlighting the need for reconciliation. As Catherine faced the inevitable, the fractures within the family became more apparent, leaving the question of unity hanging in the balance. The chapters ahead would test whether the family could put aside their grievances and unite in the face of impending loss, or if the rifts would continue to widen, irreparably changing the course of their shared history. The hospital room, filled with the weight of impending loss, became the backdrop for a pivotal moment of reckoning for the fractured family. Catherine's weakening condition served as a catalyst for a reluctant but necessary reconciliation. Billy, Anne, Dan, and Rebecca sat in a tense silence, the gravity of the situation weighing heavily on their shoulders. Catherine, with a fragile but determined voice, addressed her children, I can't change the past, but I don't want my final moments to be marred by discord. Can we not find a way to come together for each other? Anne, empathetic and gentle, added, We're all hurting, but it's time to prioritize Mom. She deserves our unity, not our disagreements. Dan, visibly conflicted, sighed and looked at his mother. I don't want you to leave with regrets, Mom but it's not easy. Billy, recognizing the struggle in his brother, spoke with a softened tone, Dan, we're family. We can't change what happened, but we can choose how we move forward. Rebecca, arms still crossed, hesitated before saying, I don't know if we can just forget everything, but for mom's sake, I'm willing to try. As the family navigated the delicate balance between past grievances and a shared commitment to Catherine, a tentative sense of unity began to emerge. The air, once thick with resentment, seemed to lighten. Catherine, grateful for the small but significant shift, smiled weakly. Thank you, my loves. This means more to me than you'll ever know. In the days that followed, the family worked towards a fragile truce. They took turns sitting by Catherine's bedside, sharing stories, laughter, and even tears. The looming loss became an opportunity for healing, and the inevitability of life's impermanence pushed them to embrace the present. As Catherine's final moments drew near, the family found solace in their newfound unity. The chapters of discord and resentment began to fade, replaced by a shared commitment to honor Catherine's memory. The legacy of their family's trials and triumphs would continue, shaped by the lessons learned in the crucible of loss and reconciliation. And so, as Catherine's journey came to an end, the family, scared but strengthened, faced the future with a collective determination to move forward together.